all right <clears throat> good day everyone and this is another tutorial on from um, pick up and packer book one and today we'll be begin we'll begin the series on tangency so i'll start with a very simple tangency exam problem now uh, on page 19 of pick up and backer book one um number six so let's begin okay as you can see on um on the image that's it's it's like a shelf so first draw the horizontal also remember to give space for your radius for each curve yeah it's going to be like a radius of 140 so you should you should give enough space maybe like the total distance from here to here here to here just give enough space on your paper all right so measuring from here it says it is 112 millimeters so this is 111 then we draw up the vertical parts of it and the height is 25 So I think I made a mistake. Length B. Yeah. So the distance from here to here is a hundred and so and the height is 25 okay so we have that then from this point here we have a distance of 10 to the that topmost um circ um semicircle that's radius 8 the vertical distance from the radius 8 to here so from here to here is 10 and then from here upwards to where radius 8 um, sem um, semicircle is all right let me just bring it out to the book so we have this box boxy shape that's this right here so um a distance from here to here is 10 so let's get that so we draw up our center line And the distance from here to that is from here to here is giving us a hundred millimeters. So we get that out to So this point, this point over here, is the sensor line for a radius nine curve. Right here, this point is this point. 
and it's radius 9. So get compass and do that. Okay, so let's look what else can we get out from this drawing with the information we have. Okay, so at this point, this one right here, which is this point, we have that this curve is a radius of 100. So let's get that out too. Please don't mind that I have been uh, using, I said the 100 and I'm putting my points at 11. Is Of course, remember that it starts from zero. So I'm, I'm just using this instead of zero, I'm using one. Yes, so that's why. Okay. So we have that out. So we have this curve and this curve. Then we also need radius nine. So we have to if you if you look closely this radius eight sorry radius eight we have radius nine this so we need radius eight so if you look closely you will see that it's um this is at its center line and that is where this radius eight starts so we can come to conclusion that um this distance from here to here is it so we get compass it's millimeters and mark it out so we have here as that I don't know if sure you got it. If you didn't get it, just um, pause and try and look at how you did it or just rewind your playback and find out how it's done. All right, so we've gotten three of our curves. Okay, so from this one, this curve right here, we see that there is another curve of radius 140 that is joining it externally. It's an external join because this is going like this and this is going like this. Right. So um, for external, Okay, yes, so from the middle of radius 9, we'll add radius 9 and radius 140. So now it can give us the total distance that our curve will, should, should have. So you can just calculate that somewhere. From 9 plus 140. 149. So our total distance is 149. So we will get that out. As we are saying that we have this guy, we have this guy. Then we've gotten an approximate position 
we don't know the position yet of radius 114. Then let's look at it again together. We see that radius 140 is tangential to this guy externally, but it's tangential also to this line here internally. So all we have to do is to get the distance from here to here. So from this position, we also measure our 140 and mark it out. So we have the exact point, the exact location of our radius 140. And that, that's it. Okay, so since we have this point from the question, we also know that at that point, radius 105 extends. So do the same, gets out radius 105. Then we notice that radius 15 is tangential um, externally to this line here. This line. And it's also tangential to this curve internally. Okay, so we have to, we want to get um, this radius 15. So as I was saying, it's joined tangentially internally to radius 105 and this line. So uh, for internal tangency, we have 105 minus 15. So from our point 115, which is at this point, we measure 190. Then fifteen so we have our call not really aligning to do it again. So this is an error due to I'm um, wrong. Uh, maybe I didn't measure correctly from the ruler or stuff like that. So, but it should touch this curve too. So we have that. So the last but not the least curve is the one here. This guy. So we can see it's tangential internally with. 100 radius, so that's going to be 94. And you do the calculation, that's 100 minus 6. So from this point here. And then also tangential externally to 105. So 6 plus 105 will give you 111.
So being that it's external from 111, we drop. So we have that there. So that's the center of our curve. So now we can thicken the work we are done. need to have very good compasses to uh, to ensure that your curves don't move about like like it just happened so you should have good compasses or if you can't get a good compass you can just use uh, french curves like this and thicken not for getting the curves, not for getting the points, the centers of the curves, but for thickening. Because our marks are awarded also for all these guys that we are having around. Marks are awarded for them. So you should ensure you have a compass to know that you just get a, a French curve and draw all the curves. But sometimes I use this to ensure that my curves are just like tracing over what I've already done to ensure that they are thick enough and you should ensure the French curve you have is what it needs, what your drawing needs So we're done with this example. If you didn't get any aspects, just um, go back and check them out. So what you need to do next is um, do your dimensioning and you're good to go. All right.